Alex here with part 176 of the My Docket series on child custody and visitation. As my previous videos, I'll take this opportunity to direct my viewers to part zero if you haven't seen it yet. That's the video that contains the detailed disclaimers and the underlying purpose of the series. Two things that I will glaze over are, number one, I'm not in the middle of this right now. My case is completely and totally over. It's closed. It cannot be reopened, and that's because my access parental rights have been terminated. Number two, the natural version as to the purpose of the series is to give my viewers one big example of my eight-year-long high-conflict child custody ordeal from beginning to end in chronological order. This is a video that's going to go over some disputes on the proposed order. I feel like in that last video, we already saw signs that a dispute was coming. And in this video, we are going into the objection that is filed by, I think it's by my attorney and some of the ancillary documents that come from that, like the setting of the teleconference between the judge and the two lawyers and stuff like that. This is really going to be a video that can, um, that does underline for you guys just how contentious the proposed order process can be when there are two attorneys on the case and there are shenanigans going on. When there's one attorney on the case, this is typically, um, I don't want to use the word typically because that sounds really bad. You should watch my video on the topic proposed orders though because I explain how some attorneys will abuse the process to have certain portions of the court's order omitted from the final written order and sometimes they will even insert new language into the court order that was never discussed by the judge. So definitely watch the video proposed order because this is one of the biggest things that I think non-attorneys overlook when it comes to representing themselves. Um, all that being said, we really do just need to go straight into what my attorney has bought. Here we have the objection to notice of compliance with Rule 9, the proposed order following the hearing attached. And anyway, this is just going to be probably, probably going to be my attorney just going through that proposed order and objecting to the, you know, my ex's attorney's proposed order line by line. It's just so, I mean, we're down into the weeds at this point. Um, <laughs> memorandum of points and authorities. So we go through the background. This just discusses when we came together for the hearing. The, my ex's attorney was instructed to prepare the order. That's nice. On August 18th, we received the notice of compliance with Rule 9. The review of the proposed order following the hearing has several provisions contained therein to be inconsistent with the court's findings and orders. Um, yeah. So we go through all that work and, and, and go through the hearing. The judge makes her order, and then my ex's attorney messes the order up anyway. And of course... They mess it up in a way that's favorable to them. It's like, this is supposed to be a part of the process where the litigation has ended and the attorneys are just doing a service to the court to help the court with its workload. But instead, the attorneys see this as an extension of the litigation process. This is just yet another part of the process to weaponize and exploit. And this is one of the things that severely disenfranchises the public. Could you imagine going through days of trial and then after you have gone through all that work and spent all that money, the judge tells the attorney to prepare the order, and they just change it. They just say, eh, let's just add a few things in there that were never ordered. Let's take a few things out, send it to the judge. The judge doesn't have time. They just trust the lawyer and they sign it. Could you imagine how that would feel? It would make you feel like, what was the point of going to the hearing anyway? The attorney is just going to warp that order. They're just going to change it anyway. The judge isn't going to order these things for my, my ex, but it doesn't matter because the lawyer will just put them in there. The judge is going to give me all of these wonderful things that I fought so hard for. It doesn't matter. The lawyer is just going to take them out. They're not going to put them in there. The judge is going to check it. They're going to just sign it. This happens. This happens all the time. Anyway, let's see how my attorney objects to it. A proposed order following June 29, 2015 hearing. Um, let's see. Provide. What is this talking about? Okay, so first they're lying. <laughs> I'm not even going to hold back on that one. They're just flat lying. And they're saying that the judge ordered that my ex would no longer um, be subject to a wage garnishment. 
what they're doing is they are trying to play dumb here. They're acting like the order for my ex to deposit money directly into the bank account also is an order that the wage withholdment from the Washoe County District Attorney's Office is not going to occur. And this is a way that the attorney can warp this order and then have a path of retreat if the judge calls him out. He can just say, oh, well, I didn't know that's what you meant. I thought you meant that, that you know, we wouldn't be garnishing our wages anymore at all. And so, I mean, if, if they do like a bald face lie, they'll be subject to discipline, violation of the rules of professional conduct. They could be suspended, etc. But they need a way to be able to warp the order. And at the same time, if called out, they can say, well, that's what we thought you meant, Judge. We didn't know that this is what you meant. So anyway, my attorney here is clarifying what everybody already knows, which is that my ex is supposed to deposit the $50 arrearages through uh, directly to the bank account and that the child support is to be subject to a wage withholding. If the judge did not want my ex subject to a wage withholding, a withholding she would have stated from the bench she no longer will be subject to a wage withholding. She didn't say that. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the next section here. Um, let's see. My I, uh, I sent my ex a letter identifying the name of the bank account and the routing number for the account. Since that time, my ex has not made any deposits into the account. Yay! <laughs> this is what I told you guys would happen earlier. All this nonsense, all of these, this appellate work over my ex having her money seized, that's what we had to do. That's what I said that's what we would have to do. I told the judge that's what we would have to do. Nobody listened. And here we are with all these appeals going up to the Supreme Court. This judge is going to get multiple reversals from this, this stupid mistake. And my ex isn't going to pay any money the whole time. The whole time. All the money that I'm going to get is going to be seized. Let's go to the next section here. Proposed order following June 29, 2015 hearing. Outstanding flight expenses. It was agreed at the hearing that my ex provided proof of cost of the two flights for visitation. Um, the proposed order omits that my ex is entitled to reimbursement for cost to transport him only. Okay, so what she's trying to do is leave out this specific constraint so that she can get much more money out of me. And this is something that ju the judge specifically ordered. Uh, next section here, alternative or alternating custodial visitation period. Parenting plan does not accurately reflect the court's order regarding her one weekend per month visitation, namely that these visits are to take place in Las Vegas. So she left that out. She would have used that too. She would have abused that too. Next section here, uh, parenting plan uh, 2E to 2F, seven day vacation periods. I'm objecting to the provisions. Uh, as to the required notice only, the proposed order does not reflect the order of the court that we are to give each other 60 days notice. Of course, she's not going to want that in the final order because with that in there, she won't be able to just drop into Vegas and say, hey, I want to see him right now. Um, next section here. And guys, I've said it this before. The oral pronouncements from the bench are ineffective for any purpose. This is the order that would have controlled. So if this final order was signed by the judge, this is what I would have been stuck with. It wouldn't have mattered what the judge said at the hearing. That whole hearing video that you guys watched may as well just erase it from your minds because the only thing that would matter is that final written order. Um, we got Parenting Plan 5 Education Agreements. Parenting Plan states that both parties shall have access to our son's school information. Um, I feel the provision is needed due to high conflict. Well, if the court ordered it, it should be in there. Parenting plan states that parties shall obtain approval from the other parent prior to enrollment in school <laughs> activities and conferences. The court considered this request at the hearing and expressly denied it. <laughs> so let's just stick that one in there. The judge said that she even objected to this. The judge stated, even I object with this, this provision. I think this was, there were two. There was this one and then there was a medical one. And the, the concern the judge had was that you could use this provision to just block the child from being enrolled into anything. Now, the lawyer just stuck it in there anyway, hoping that nobody would notice and that the judge would sign it. Because then I'd be bound by it. Parenting Plan 6, Medical Arrangements. The court recognized that as the primary custodian, um, I would be scheduling our son's appointments. In the spirit of cooperation, I offered to, uh, to her the task of scheduling and taking him to eye doctor appointments. Uh, the court never ordered that my ex was solely responsible for scheduling and taking him to eye doctor appointments and never no ordered that the eye doctor remain in Reno. The parenting plan states that she shall make arrangements with the eye doctor who shall be located in Reno. Um, that she may make arrangement for the for him. Okay, so I see she's... Oh, yeah, and if she fails to make eye doctor appointments, that I shall be permitted to schedule the appointments with the doctor in Reno or transfer his care to Vegas, Nevada. I mean, this is such, it's sad that this had to be in the order, but it did because that's exactly what happened. Um, and the judge is gonna end up having a deal with not one, but two motions on this issue. 
Uh, transportation costs. The court did not order us to split alternate paying the cost of four airline tickets for our son to visit with um, my ex. Okay, so I guess more money. She's trying to get more money and my attorney has noticed this um, discrepancy and she's correcting it. Um, taking the child outside the residential area. The parenting plan states that when a parent takes our son out of the state of Nevada, he or she will provide the other parent an itinerary. Um, I'm requesting that there be no exception that would alleviate a parent from providing the locations. Oh, I guess my ex is trying to insert this exception here in case she's trying to take him camping, which she has done a number of times and I doubt is true. She would just say, hey, I'm taking him camping. She wouldn't give me any information, no address, no phone number. Um... Parenting plan, um, I'm requesting the language of Section 8i be adjusted to exclude the requirement that the parties attend mediation. Wait, did she seriously try to put this in there? The, what did she do? The issue addressed in the pleadings and the hearing in the court found due to the high conflict, the mediation failure in the past existed um, to relieve us of this requirement. Okay, so I'm just asking for an adjustment. Maybe they... I'm interested now to see what they did here because the judge specifically told them that we would not be subject to mediation. Ugh. Issues not addressed at hearing. I wish to bring up two new issues. Um, let's see here. Regarding the parties not altering his physical appearance. Oh, because, oh, yeah, she dyed his hair. I wish I could remember what color. So prior, okay, so <laughs> my ex had our son prior to him starting school and she changed his hair color. I think it was like pink or orange or green or purple or something like that. And the school had an issue with it. Of course, the school would have an issue with it. It's a it's a school that uses uniforms. It's not a school where you can just even send your child to school in his own clothes. He was going to Coral Academy of Science and he had to wear a school uniform, specific color shoes. And so, I mean, the same thing for the hair. Um, physical appearance. Let's see. What did she do? Upon return, she, um, I reported. My ex had dyed his hair blue and green. She did so without consulting me. The dyed hair caused him significant embarrassment in public. I remember the quality being terrible. It even like came off on his skin. So his his dyed hair, it like came off on his forehead, on his neck and shoulders, and it stained his skin. She did it just to get back at us. Um, it, it mean, she was just mad. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's sad. But it's just an extension of what she was already doing. If you want to learn why a high conflict ex won't stop even after they lose custody, please watch my video on the topic Fighting Makes It Worse. I go into the cycle of revenge. Um, therapy sessions. Let's see here. I spoke with... Oh, this is the conflict with the therapy session. So where is... Okay, yeah, so my ex told our son right in front of the therapist to her face. She said that you don't have to tell the doctor anything that you don't want to. And she gave our son a cell phone and she told him that if he got scared, that he should call her and that she would come into the therapy room and pull him out of therapy. This was the most bizarre, freaky thing that I had ever seen my ex do because she did it. Usually, I think she did this stuff in private. Like she would grill him, she would coach him, she would coerce him, she would threaten him in private. This was the first time I saw her to the to the therapist's face in the middle of the waiting room where everyone could see, including me. Hey, Army, if you don't want to tell her anything, you don't have to. And here's my phone. If you feel scared, just call me and I'll come get you. The therapist was bewildered. But unfortunately, the therapist didn't have much experience. And so she really didn't end up handling the situation competently. What I ended up doing was getting him enrolled with a different therapist, a therapist who had experience with children in foster care. And he handled the situation a whole lot better. Plus, I got an order from the court banning my ex from showing up at those appointments. Um, but like, guys, this is like red flag. I don't know how a therapist wouldn't just totally flip seeing a parent do that. Because the point of therapy is for the child to open up. And my ex is trying to tell our child that he doesn't have to say anything he wants. She's trying to get him to keep the secrets that she's got him keeping. Um, the other therapist that I take him to actually gets these secrets out. Gets the secrets out of him. But this therapist really, she wasn't very helpful at all. Conclusion. Let's see. 
pretty standard conclusion. Telephone conference to discuss the res and resolve the disputes. My attorney signs it. A declaration, which is under penalty of perjury, indicating that everything in here is true and correct. List of exhibits. We have two exhibits. First one is um, my attorney to her attorney. These are the banking numbers, the routing numbers. I don't have this account anymore anyway. Even if it was there, I wouldn't care. Um, that's everything. Please be advised that our family wizard has been set up. But my, my, once she has, okay, so she hasn't set up her account yet, but I've set up mine. Um, it's interesting because he was the one that wanted our family wizard, yet I, I signed up first. <laughs> Exhibit two. Here we have, um, what is this? My attorney to, okay, so this is an email. This is, ah, hey guys, guess what started? The clothing thefts, yay! So the judge orders that we need to let our son have his clothes, that that's his clothes, that's not our clothes, and we need to just both work together. So this is what just work together looks like in a high conflict child custody case. It's exactly not that. My ex basically stole all the clothing again, and this is gonna happen many, many times. After like four or five times and I start filing motions, that's when the judge change, changes her mind because she realizes how bad the situation is. Anyway, she's stealing clothes. She dyed his hair. And um, I think I was going to mention one more thing. Oh, if you want to learn why judges really don't know how to handle these situations, please watch my video on the topic, high conflict incompetence. I think that's everything. Okay. Oh, wait, we got another doc. We got a few other documents. Request for submission. Okay. This is just submitting to the court. <clears throat> my ex's attorney is submitting to the court his proposed order. And if you want to learn more about the request for submission, guys, please watch my video on the topic, request for submission. Um, what? What is this? Oh. Okay, so he's replying to our objection. So this is not just a request for submission. This is like, this is a reply to the objection. It's weird how he handled it. Okay, we'll go through it. Um... Let me see if anything jumps out at me. Child support. I complained that it was not agreed that my ex's child support would no longer be subject to withholding. However, the agreement as placed on the record was that she will exchange information where direct deposit will be made and that will be the sole way payments. Okay, well, it's nice that he's saying this and he sounds like he's like all official and he cites the recording and everything. But the judge says, no, that's not true. Her wages will be garnished. We will be having that money seized. So this is just him basically gaslighting everyone. He's not even, he's not just gaslighting my attorney, he's gaslighting the judge because he's doubling down here and he's trying to act like everyone is dumb and that it says right here on the recording, this is what the judge said. So the judge is going to fix his wagon and she's going to enter that order, the correct order, which is that her monies will be seized. Um, flight expenses. Needs to specify that I am only to reimburse the costs associated with the two flights. I am correct. Oh, good. He admitted this one. That's cool. So this one, he concedes that he messed up. Um, here we have the alternating custodial visitation periods. Uh, plan should be amended to state the regular visitation periods shall occur in Las Vegas. I'm correct. Okay, so he's fixing this one too. I don't know why he just didn't pick up the phone and talk to my attorney. Why did he have to wait for us to file documents? Is he trying to just rack up more attorney fees for my ex? That's what it makes it look like to me. Um, parenting plans, seven day vacation periods. Um, this is such a mess. I'm going to wait until the final order comes out to talk about the vacation. This is just a mess. Education arrangements. Um, consent before enrolling into extracurricular activity. The parenting plan requires us to agree where who he will be enrolled in school only. There's no requirement that extracurriculars are to be agreed to. We'll see when we look at the final order. Medical arrangements. Complain that I never agreed that I, my ex would be in charge of vision appointments. That's not what we said. We were just talking about the specifics as to the location. So he doesn't even characterize our objection correctly. I talk about why attorneys characterize your objection incorrectly. Actually, this is very specific to child custody and visitation and family law. Other attorneys don't do this as much. The reason that family law attorneys do this is because very often it works. The lawyer will read this and they will think that that's what you actually said. The lawyer, I'm sorry, the judge. A lot of times the judges won't double check. They won't look and see what your actual statements were and they'll just assume that this attorney who's characterized you must have characterized you correctly. Um, talk about this in the video, win at all costs. Next assertion is transportation costs. I'm claiming that I never agreed to alternate paying for flights. Um, 
I don't think he characterized this correctly here either. He's either playing dumb that he doesn't know how to correct characterize or objections uh, correctly, or he's just doing the same thing that I mentioned earlier, which he's mischaracterizing us on purpose in order to get what he wants. Next section here, taking the child outside the residential area. I think this was just a problem with the um, with camping trips and something like that. We'll see what that looks like in the final order. Modification of the parenting plan. Mediation is encouraged but not required. I am correct. Oops, messed that one up. So then he went ahead and fixed that one too. Issues not addressed at the hearing. I'm next arguing two issues that were not addressed at the hearing. These issues were not addressed and it's not appropriate to include them in the order following hearing. So my ex will not address these here. Um, that's fine, but all it's going to happen is I'm going to file two more motions and then he's going to retreat. So I'm going to hit him with motion, 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 and then he's going to file a notice of withdrawal. He's going to get off the case. <coughs> we have a certificate of service here um, indicating under rule five that this document was mailed to us. Index of exhibits here, which is the proposed order that we've already seen a number of times. I'm not going to go through that again. It's just a proposed order, guys. It's not signed. As with the previous videos in the My Docket series, you can always go down in the description below, click on the link, download the document for yourself, and then if you see something in there that you think I should look at, go ahead and bring it up in the comments. Order regarding proposed order following June 29, 2015 hearing and sitting a telephonic hearing. So this is the judge having read the objections and she has decided to set a telephonic hearing or actually she has ordered us to set a date for the telephonic hearing within, I think, like 10 days or something like that, which is consistent with the civil rules of civil procedure. Yeah, within 10 days of this order. We have here a certificate of service under Rule 5 indicating that this document was served upon my attorney and upon my ex's attorney. Next document, notice to set. So my ex's attorney files a notice to set and that this, this is setting the date and time that the attorneys are supposed to confer and coordinate on the date and time for <laughs> the telephonic um, conference. Please watch my video, notice to set. This can be very confusing for people who don't know what this is. There is more to it than it may seem. So watch my video on the topic, notice to set, if you haven't seen it yet. Affirmation under the law. And then the certificate of Rule 5 service indicating this document was mailed to my attorney. Here we have the notice of teleconference. This is entered by the my ex's attorney and he is stating that the date of the teleconference is november 3rd 2015 at 10 a.m in the above entitled court um guys i was not present at this hearing neither was my ex it was just two attorneys and it's on the record which means we do have a hearing video i am very excited to see this video i have not seen it yet even as i go through this video right now i'm not going to watch it in advance i'm going to go through this video and give you guys my first impressions in real time as i go through that video and of course as with all of our hearing videos this will be premiered so keep an eye out for this uh, premiere it should come up later this week Certificate of Rule 5 Service indicating that this document was mailed to my attorney. Going into the aftermath, we have one, two, three, four, five documents. Let's see. I filed one of those documents. Um, it was a free filing, so I incurred zero dollars in costs. My ex filed looks like one, two, three of those documents. Those were all free filings, so she incurred zero dollars in costs as well. I had an attorney who was representing me for free, so I incurred zero dollars in attorney fees. My ex's attorney, let's see here, to review that objection, it was very detailed and it would have taken um, some time because they would have had to watch that video again. I think that reviewing my attorney's objection would have taken about 30 minutes for that attorney. I think that preparing his response to our objection would have taken at least an hour because he would have had to confer with my ex and again, that would take some time to go through that video. So we're looking at an hour and a half so far to prepare both notices. So the notice to sit and the notice to teleconference and also the request for submission. I think we can just round all those together to another half hour, which is going to take um, her attorney fees up to two hours at the rate of $250. No, that's right. At the rate of $250 an hour, that's going to come to $500 in attorney fees for my ex. As with my previous videos, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time.